I'm reading from a chapter in Kenneth Hagin's Believer's Authority called Breaking the Power of the Devil. We see in Ephesians 6.12 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In one translation I read says against bodies of bodies of flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, and one translation says wicked spirits in the heavenlies. The word of God teaches us that these evil spirits are fallen angels who have been dethroned by the Lord Jesus Christ. Our contact with these demons should be with the knowledge that Jesus defeated them, spoiled them, put them to naught, that is nothing. That's Colossians 2.15. And now that Jesus has dethroned them, we can reign over them. Adam's treason. Originally, God made the earth and the fullness thereof, giving Adam dominion over all the works of his hands. In other words, Adam was the God of this world. Adam was God, the God of this world. Adam was the God of this world. <laughs> Adam committed high treason and sold out to Satan. And Satan through Adam, became the God of this world. Adam didn't have the moral right to commit treason, but he had the legal right to do it. Now Satan has a right to be here and be the God of this world until Adam's lease runs out. Satan had the right to rule over us until we became new creatures and got into the body of Christ. as we see in Colossians 1, giving thanks unto the Father who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. That's Colossians 1, 12 and 13. Truly, that's why Satan has no right to rule us or dominate us. Yet, the average Christian has more faith in Satan's authority and power than in God's. The Bible not only talks about the first man, Adam, but also about the second Adam, Jesus Christ, who became our substitute in the first in first Corinthians fifteen forty five he's called the last Adam. And in the 47th verse of 1 Corinthians 15, he's called the second, 
the second man. All that Jesus did, he did for us. One trouble is that we relegate everything to the future. Most church people believe we will exercise spiritual authority sometime in the millennium, the 2,000 years after the tribulation. If that is so, why does the Bible say Satan will be bound during the millennium? There won't be any need to exercise authority over Satan then if he's bound for those 2,000 years because there will be nothing here that will hurt or destroy. It's now when there is something that will hurt and destroy that we have authority. But many people believe we can't have much of anything now. They think Satan's running everything. We must remember that although we are in the world, we are not of the world. Satan's running a lot of what is here on earth. But he's not running me. He's not running the church. He's not running you. He's not dominating you. We can dominate him. We have authority over him. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, 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 nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, 19. Does the church in this century have less authority than it did right after Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, and seating at the Father's right hand? If it has less authority today, it would have been better for Jesus not to have died. But no, bless God, we have authority. We have authority. We have authority. We have authority. Matter of fact, in an earlier chapter, Brother Hagen tells us that in that scripture, Luke 10, 19, the first use of the word power is actually authority. We don't have the physical power to tread on demons and evil spirits, that is, serpents and scorpions, but, and, and over all the pow power, the strength, the power of the enemy. We don't have the physical power, but we have the author all the authority that's been vested in Jesus. We have that authority, just like a policeman has authority vested in him. That's why he can do what he does. We have that authority. Oh, if only we all would get this and admit that we haven't re realized it. 
I mean, it, it really takes humility to listen to this and think, wait a second, maybe there's a, a deeper level that I haven't entered into. We need to build these truths into our lives by meditating and feeding upon them until they become a part of our consciousness. And all day long today, I've been saying inside just quietly, behold, Ellen, I give you authority over all the power of demons and evil spirits and over all the power of the devil. All day long. <clears throat> Naturally speaking, we eat certain foods every day because doctors tell us we need certain vitamins, etc. to build a strong body. Therefore, there are spiritual vitamins and minerals we need to take every day to be healthy Christians. It's not hard. It's not, it's not over the moon, fantastically difficult. Just that one scripture, start there. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you authority to tread on demons and evil spirits. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 18, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All the authority that can be exercised, all the authority that can be exercised upon the earth has to be exercised through the church because Christ is not here in person, in his physical body. All the authority that can be, ex oh, let's see, Matthew 18, 28, 18, the Great Commission. All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All the authority that can be exercised upon the earth has to be exercised through the church. He's the head. We're part of the body. And just like your head can't do a thing, I can dish out commands to my body. But if my, my body doesn't do it, it don't get done. So all the authority that can be exercised upon the earth has to be exercised by the church because Christ is not here in person in his physical body. We are the body of Christ. Even though we have prayed, now, Lord, you do this and that, leaving everything up to him. He has conferred his authority on the earth to his body. As a matter of fact, I've heard one preacher say that Matthew 28, 18, all power, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Now you go in that authority. And then leaping over to Mark 16, where the Great Commission is also expressed. And the very first thing is, you go and cast out demons. It's what we're here to do. Take authority over everything demonic. That's why we're here.
his authority on the earth to his body. I'm sorry. He has conferred, just like I was saying, he has conferred his authority on the earth to his body, the church. That's me. I'm part of the church and you are too. He conferred that authority to me and you. Now we got to open ourselves up. Don't fight this. I know how easy it is to fight it because it's new. I, I mentioned yesterday, I think, that I heard it said that when there's a, a new thought comes into our brain, the scientists have said it actually makes a new road in your brain. Let it in. <laughs> Let it in that <clears throat> he conferred his authority on you. All authority over the demons and evil spirits are be, have been conferred to you. According to Matthew 28, 18. Thus, many problems exist because we permit them. We're not doing anything about them. We're the ones who are supposed to do something about them. And I've seen so many Christians, some of them, well, I've seen so many Christians just begging and pleading, but never, even though they've heard the truth about having the authority, they've never stood up to the devil, never taken that authority. And it was not pretty. Many problems exist because we permit them to. We're not doing anything about them. We're the ones who are supposed to do something about them. But we're trying to get someone else, including God, to do something about them. And he can't. He doesn't break his own word. He said, I give all authority to you. The, the, this became real to me years ago when I was studying along this line. I couldn't explain it in my mind, but I knew it in my spirit. I began to understand the authority we have. While praying for my older brother's salvation, I heard the Lord in my spirit challenge me. You do something about it. Oh, this should help you to help your brothers and sisters and mothers and children. I have been I had been praying for my brother's salvation for many years. He was what you would call the black sheep of the family. In spite of my prayers, he seemed to get worse instead of better. I always had prayed, God save him. I'd have fasted. I'd even fasted. I was prone to slip back into praying this way. But after the Lord challenged me, do you do something about it? After he told me I had the authority, I said, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of the devil over my brother's life. And I claim his salvation. And I do the same thing right now and I encourage you all to do it with me. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of the devil over my nephews and nieces and cousins' lives. And I claim their salvation. I gave the order. I didn't keep saying it or praying it. When a king gives an order, he knows it's going to be carried out. When a king gives the order, he knows it's going to be carried out. The devil tried to tell me my brother never would be saved, but I shut my mind off and started laughing. I said, I don't think he'll be saved. 
I know it. I took the name of Jesus and broke your power over him. Notice Brother Hagen talks to the devil, or now he's in glory, but at this time he talks to the devil. Jesus talked to the devil. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for you and me. We have this authority. I know it. I took the name of Jesus and broke your power over my brother. And I claimed his deliverance and salvation. I went my way whistling. Within 10 days, my brother was saved. The word works. As long as Satan can keep you in unbelief, or hold you in the area of reason. He'll whip you in every battle. But if you'll hold him in the arena of faith, of faith and the spirit, you'll whip him every time. He won't argue with you about the name of Jesus. He's afraid of that name. I have found that the most effective way to pray can be when you demand your rights. That's the way I pray. I demand my rights. Wow, this is earth moving. <laughs> this is, I feel the earth move under my feet. That's the way I pray. I demand my rights. Peter at the gate beautiful did not pray for the lame man. He demanded that he be healed. Acts 3, 6. You're not demanding of God when you demand your rights. You're demanding of the devil. This thing is real. This thing is real. What I'm sharing is real. Jesus, and you're going to have victory after victory. And don't think you have to start at the top of the mountain like some great leader. Start where you are. Start with something you truly have faith for. And build and build and build on your victories. I find that when people are tormented with some kind of demonic oppression, something rises up big in me. And I know I have all authority over those demonic forces. I just know it. It's called the love of God shed abroad in my heart strengthened with might by his spirit till Christ be formed in me that I know the hope to which he's called me. That's the hope to which he's called us. And what is the length and breadth and depth and height to know the love of Christ? This is all about love, 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 love. And it's almost like we're being selfish by not acting on these great truths. Don't be selfish. Start doing it. Take authority over him. The Satan. <laughs> Jesus made this statement in John 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will 
I do. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He's not talking about prayer. The Greek word here is demand, not ask. If you demand anything in my name, I will do it. If you demand anything in my name, I will do it. Now, of course, you got all these people who are listening to the lies of the devil, and they just think this is too freaky for words, that we should demand and Jesus will do it. That's sad. That's sad for those people. Sad. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I'll say to you personally what the Lord spoke to me. I will do whatever you ask, Ellen, for whoever you pray for. And I just say that to you. He will do whatever you ask for whoever you pray for. Remember, it's not ask, it's demand. Satan is filthy, rotten scum of the earth. We don't need to respect him. We do not need to give him any respect. He has, Jesus spoiled, ruined, spoiled principalities and powers and all the power of the devil. He made a show, Colossians 2.15, a show of them openly. and marched them, made a parade, triumphing over every evil spirit in his death, burial, and resurrection. And if you're still hanging around the cross with a dead Jesus, he's not on that cross dead. It's the death, burial, and resurrection that we live in resurrection. <clears throat> now, on the other hand, in John 23 and 24, it's talking about prayer, which is different from this command, demand. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. This is now again in, Mark, in John 16, verse 23 and 24. He hasn't gone to the cross yet. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. The Father is mentioned here in connection with prayer, but he isn't mentioned in the passage in John 14. So one is praying to the Father in the name of Jesus, the other demanding in the name of Jesus, and Jesus will do it. He says in verse 14, John 14, 14, I will do it. Now I know these. this is opening up new roads in your brain. You've not been taught this yet, and I know that. So don't just throw it over into the curb. But let it in, because it's, it's life and death are in the power 
of these words. The Greek actually reads, whatsoever you demand as your rights and privilege in John 14. You hear that? Whatsoever you demand is as your rights and privileges. You've got to learn what your rights are. You've got to learn what your privileges are. And the, church, the devil has been very successful in keeping us living really low. Many years ago, when I was pastoring a little church in Texas, Brother Hagen says, a woman brought her violently insane sister to the parsonage to be prayed for. Because this woman had tried to kill herself and others, she had been in a padded cell for two years. Can you imagine that horror of that? However, her health had deteriorated and doctors had recommended a furlough at home for her because she was no longer considered dangerous. When her sister introduced me as a preacher, scriptures started rolling off this woman's tongue. She thought she had committed the unpardonable sin. The Lord told me to stand in front of her and say, Come out, thou unclean spirit, in the name of Jesus. I did that, but nothing happened. She just sat there looking like a statue. I knew I had spoken the word of faith. You don't have to stand there all day long and command devils to come out. They're going to do, they're going to do it when you tell them, when you tell them to do it, if you know your authority. So get these scriptures in you. Just keep whispering them into your heart. Get it in. They have to go once the command is given in faith. Two days later, I was told the woman was having a violent attack, similar to the kind she had had when she first lost her mind. This news did not disturb me. In the Bible, we read that, I'm sorry, we read that when Jesus rebuked the devil in such cases, people would fall and the devil would tear them. I knew the devil was just tearing this woman before he left for good. I knew she wouldn't have any more spells and she didn't. The doctors pronounced her normal and sent her home for good. 20 years later, she was happy and healthy, teaching a Sunday school class and working in a business. Hallelujah. Well, my next section will be Faith's role in authority. And then also we'll be reading about some other very, very exciting things. Oh, Father, I just rejoice. I'm so happy to be able to share this with people. I'm so happy that so many people will grab hold of it and take authority where they've never taken it before. Hallelujah. 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 I feel like the Lord wants me to tell you that I have been battling something the enemy put in my back that I know is of the devil. And I have had the victory. Hallelujah. 
and nothing by any means can harm me. Nothing. Nothing. Behold, I give you authority over all the evil spirits and demons and over all the power of Satan and nothing by any means will harm you. I am so happy that so many people are grabbing hold of this and running with it and using it to set the people they care about the most free behind the curtain, behind the scenes. Oh, I'm just... I just believe that that you're going you're going to be able to put this into practice for yourself in your own way and in your own situation and not to be afraid I encourage you do not let the devil frighten you he has nothing in you nothing